And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the next stepping on us. First, we're visiting the Temple Owls. At guard, number zero, Ashley Jones. At forward, number one, Nina Young. At guard, number 12, Imani Mayo. At forward, Number 20, Alexa Williamson. And at four, number 25, Mia Davis. Tennis head coach is Tanya Cardoso. The Owls associate head coach is Wayne Indy. Their assistant coaches are Wilton Crockett and CJ Jones.
On this final night of the regular season for the women's basketball campaign, we welcome you to the Big Easy. New Orleans tonight, the site, as the home squad green wave of Tulane collides with the Owls of Temple. Identical records at seven and eight in conference play. They are right in the heart of the standings. A lot of seeding still up, grab, up for grabs tonight. All teams in the American are in action tonight. Only UConn knows their ultimate seeding when they head back home to host the conference tournament in their home state. As they look to improve to 16-0 potentially tonight, they have already locked up that number one seed. But Cincinnati, the two Florida schools, will be among your coveted top four seeds. We know that much. But as for Temple and Tulane, one of them improves to 8-8. Eight and eight. The other one falls to 7-9. and nine. Great to have you back with us one final time this American women's basketball season. Lincoln Rose, Coach Angela Beck. Again, a lot on the line tonight in terms of positioning in the conference tournament next week. What are you looking forward to the most? Well, they're, they're trying for fifth or sixth seed here in the league. The fifth place team gets to play UConn in that bracket, so I don't know how, how bad they want that. Congratulations. But, but anyway, uh, scoring-wise, we have the best score, one of the best scoring offensive teams besides UConn with Temple. They like to run and gun, and they like to shoot the three, and they shoot about seven threes a game. And then you have someone like... Um, Tulane, who who is a best, a really good defensive team, and they're they're forcing 28% uh, from field goal range from three point range. So who who can stop who is is what's going to happen here. Take a look at your keys to the matchup. First up, how the women from Philadelphia get a critical victory here on the road. Well, the Owls got they have to pound the post, hit from the charity stripe, which they do so well, and be very physical and be the aggressors because defense is not the name of their game. For Tulane, they started off 6-0 and in conference play, but certainly have hit a slide here in the back half of the schedule. How do they find a win in their only meeting with Temple this year? Well, their defense is great, but they have to limit their turnovers. they got to get the ball in the paint, and they have to rebound. Whoever rebounds here is going to fare well. Well, you mentioned that Temple, of course, one of the top scoring teams in the American this year. A big part of that is Mia Davis, who does a little bit of everything and a lot of even more things. Well, Cheryl Miller, watch list, top 10 finalist for small forward. 
She leads the league in, in double doubles, third in the conference in scoring. This girl can get it done inside. She can get it done off the dribble. She can shoot the three. So she's multi-faceted and multi-talented. Meanwhile, for Tulane, even while the team may have struggled down the back half of the schedule, Crystal Freeman keeps getting better each night. Well, a lot like Mia Davis, uh, Crystal Freeman does it all for her team. She's eighth in the scoring in, in the league. She can shoot it from three. She can take you off the dribble. She's another small forward that has national recognition. It is the only meeting this year in the regular season between Tulane and Temple. Of course, they would love to clash again in the conference tournament. So much on the line tonight here on ADM. And actually, we are just about underway here. They had the tip, then they were informed that they were tipping a little prematurely. So the reason why we have an inbounds play get started. Oh, you see something new. Well, it's, it makes it more exciting here for the last game of the year. Numbers and they were in a hurry to get the regular season over. We thought we'd ask them to tap the brakes a little bit. Now I think there's a clock issue. Well, anytime you bring two teams that are going to be fighting as hard as they are for fifth and sixth place here in the league, uh, you're going to have some mix ups here early. Much of the league has already started about an hour ago, all those East Coast games. And so about midway through this game, we should start seeing some results. Now, I'm not going to talk about precincts reporting or projected winners, but uh, when we do see final scores, uh, we will start to get a clear picture of how things play out. Temple wearing the black uniforms here on the road, Tulane in the home whites. Lots of nice touch pass inside with a little baby stab hook there to start the game. And one thing that you're going to see Temple want to do is get it inside and do the inside out action to hit their threes. So Williamson gives Temple the early advantage. Alexa Williamson out of Houston, Pennsylvania. Averaging about six points, four rebounds a night. It's been one of your constant starters this year for this Temple squad under Tanya Cardoza. Well, highly competitive coach in Cardoza. Uh, obviously, with Stockton on the other side, uh, their kids emulate a lot of the things that uh, they bring to the table themselves as coaches. Arsula Clark couldn't shake the defender, passes it back out. That went off somebody's foot. It's going to stay with Tulane and Dinah Jones. But Dinah Jones has been looking really good. 10.8 uh, points off the bench and uh, just been mixing her game up a lot and helping them. Tulane already with its first substitution of the day. And as we see Kayla Anderson come in to run the point. It is senior day for Tulane. Two outgoing seniors this year. And this one back over to Temple as the Owls make the stop. Yeah, that's the one where you want to catch it, be, uh, shoot it before you catch it. And Mia just didn't really grab it quick enough. I like the idea of bringing Anderson in early because she is the motor of Tulane's team and she's the one that makes him go. Mia Davis with the basketball. We'll send it back up top again. Mia this year averaging a double double. The only player in the American to say as much. Shot clock down to seven. And it's a 5-0 start for the Owls. Again, they are tied with Tulane in the conference standings at 7 and 8. Well, that's a welcome sight there for Mayo to get set up and, and get that early three against that 2-3 zone of Tulane. A right idea, just a, maybe step too quick from Clark. Yeah, just a little bit too hard. Um, you know, it's a big girl. You, you got to give her time to get her hands on it, and that 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 uh, pass had a little bit too much on it. Modest pressure from the Tulane defense. Again, one of the things that Tulane has been consistent about all year is their defense around the perimeter, and that'll be tested right there. Shot off the mark from Niang. And offensive putback, second chance points, 7-0 start for the Elves. That's a big offensive rebound for those guys because uh, they, they have to be aggressive and be the aggressors while they're on the road. Straight away, Tad Strong out of the right hand of Anderson, who again comes off the bench tonight, the junior. 
Been a captain since her sophomore campaign. And Tulane unable to take the zero off the board. Well, both of these teams are fairly turnover prone. They, they're not one of the better uh, possession teams in the league. They both uh, are, are at the bottom of the list for turning it over. So they just need to take their time. Unable to draw the foul. As Sierra Ford. Pardon me, I said Sierra Ford, Mia Davis. Yeah, you, you know Mia. First team all conference. She's gonna be the girl that's gonna really have to play well here today to stop the skid that they've got going. Tulane down by seven. Mia Heidi is going to be called for the push while fighting for the offense rebound. Well, they've got Heidi's number so far. A couple missed uh, passes inside to her and then an offensive push off. So um, she hasn't really gotten into her game quite yet. Great to have you with us here at Devlin Fieldhouse. Again, every member of the American is in action tonight. Only UConn right now knows its ultimate fate in the conference tournament seating wise. We do know that the top four coveted spots have all been claimed, but we don't necessarily know the order. Now, based on the way the season has been so far, it is likely that Cincinnati gets that two, UCF the three, and not all the top four seeds are, are created equally. USF, if they are the four seed, then of course uh, they would meet UConn potentially in the semifinals instead of in the championship. Yeah, I think the top four seeds are, are settled, obviously, because they're 10 and five and, and 15 and 0, but it's the Temple, Wichita, Tulane kind of look that we don't know what's going to happen in five, six, seven. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I really don't want to be five. Sorry. I'd rather be down here with Cincinnati and UCF, even though both of those teams are really hot. Nothing's going to be easy, right? <laughs> no. Not even in the big easy here where we thought Tulane was going to be the surprise team of the year after that 6-0 start. Only they and UConn were undefeated after those first few weeks. Uh, but as hot as they were to start the year, again, they have struggled down the stretch. Seven straight losses after winning their first six in conference play. Crystal Freeman just attached short off the front of the arm. Well, it, do it doesn't help that they played some really good teams in those losses, too. I mean, you know, they had a, a quite a a run down the stretch but they you know did lose a couple by short like ECU I'm sure they want that one back um, there's a couple that they lost by two to four points that you know was anybody's game again this is the only meeting this year between these two programs during the regular season and even off balance they able to pour in two more that's exactly what they're looking for you know get it in the paint and hammer it home Crystal Freeman on the board, strong up off the glass for two. Well, she just answered that, that question right there. They got it inside to her, side to her, and she put it up real strong. Little 2-3 zone, trying to mix it up a little bit against them. And Elsa stepped out of bounds right in front of that two-lane bench. A quick start for Temple on the road, looking to snap a two-game lo losing skid these past two seasons against Tulane. And actually, that will not be an official timeout. I believe they are going to determine that the timeout taken in the opening seconds of the game will count as the official timeout. Well, Tulane struggled offensively, and right now they're struggling one of nine from the field. They're just not able to get a good look. And uh, consequently, you have uh, Temple getting in there at four of eight for uh, 50 percent. So they, they need to get their offense moving. And a lot of it would be if they can create some turnovers and get a, a few in transition, get some early buckets. Tulane looking to bounce back uh, three game losing skid of its own. I say Tulane, pardon me, Temple. Games at ECU, at UCF, most recently against Tulsa. Boy, that ECU squad really has come on strong uh, with a new head coach this year. It's all started to click this last month. It really has, and I think people knew it was going to happen because she's a really great coach. But And their defense was, you know, always been super stingy. It was just trying to get their continuity on offense that was challenging. But, yeah, they, they've, they've gotten some good wins here late. As long as you have LaShonda Monk, you know you're going to have defense. 
Temple's defense, meanwhile, right now, just allowing two points to Crystal Freeman. A 9-2 start. Yang from Senegal off the front of the iron. Well, they have been hitting the heart of that zone, uh, which is right in the middle. They, they missed a shot, but that's exactly what you want to do is get it right to that mid post. Driving and kick out to Anderson. Extra pass to the corner. And that'll be a dual possession. Possession arrow is going to keep it on this end. I'd argue that's harder to do than it is to actually make a three. Manu Irirungi firing that one up. Yeah, that doesn't always feel too good uh, to get it stuck there and not be able to get it down. But uh, I've actually had that happen to my, my myself in my career a couple times. Was there somebody who was the go-to person to get it down? Well, yeah, we, we had a 6-5 center at that time, but I didn't see her op wide open down there, so I just took the three. Back into Manu Irungi, the Kiwi. Slow start, but only down by a few possessions. And working her way in, just won't go for Dinah Jones. Second chance, no. Yeah, it looks like a totally different team than we saw early. They look a little more hesitant. Um, there's not a lot of continuity in what they're doing uh, offensively, and I, I think that's just the key to the efforts there. But uh, I think Crystal Freeman's shouldering a little bit more burden than she, she should. Catch and release, Temple. The first in double digits here in this opening quarter. Well, extremely uh, patient and, and very disciplined to get that mid-range jumper again. Tulane just one for 12 so far, 8%. That will improve things a bit. Irina Peru. Well, high basketball IQ, but she can also shoot that shot with that high archer. Uh, Temple comes right back down and pulls two points right back. Quick answer by them. Uh, they probably remember last year when they got beat, you know, at home against Tulane. So Tulane has won the last game that they played. Uh, Tulane's won the last couple last year. It was a 15-0 run in the third quarter that got Tulane out ahead, never looked back. Uh, All-time series 6-2 in favor of Temple with the Owls winning the first six meetings. Temple last year, of course, in the conference tournament, exited in the first round against the same Memphis team that they had played in the regular season finale. They had beaten Memphis in the finale, but would fall by one point in that first round up in Connecticut. Well, just early quality shots by Temple. 7 of 14 right now, 50% from the field. They're one and done on this end. They're not giving you the second point opportunities, and they're getting really quality shots inside. Only taking a couple of outside shots. There they go as I'm talking about it. Well, after Jones missed a three on one end, Niang able to connect on the other for her triple. Once you establish it inside, then you're able to go outside. It frees you up and it gives you that open look. Temple two of four from beyond the arc again against one of the top defending three point teams in Tulane. Yeah, I think they just need to get out of this quarter, obviously. Uh, they're going to get a foul here on Mia. Yeah, preseason, both these teams, Temple was ranked sixth. Tulane was ranked seventh. It's kind of where we're at right now. They're kind of in that five, six, seven range. Um, Tulane did start off, like you said, early in the broadcast, really, really hot. But it's hard to maintain that throughout the season unless you have, you know, people that are carrying the weight. And, you know, that's always easier said than done. I think Crystal Freeman's a, a great player for them, but everyone else has to step up a little more, and I don't think they have those profound rebounders that they need. Up the floor with Marissa Mackins, the sophomore, who's one of your top three-point shooters in the league this year, has knocked down 71 triples this season. Yeah, I'm super impressed with her. I think her game is really coming around. Um, you know, she's, she's averaging all these threes and, and, and shooting it well from three. Niang trying to beat the buzzer. That one off the mark. First quarter in the books. Both teams even in the standings at seven and nine. Temple out to an 11 point edge after the first quarter in the books. Discovery. It can come from any direction in places new and familiar, but often starts from within.
No matter where Tulaneans go or what we're doing, we're making an impact. Over 160,000 Tulaneans making a difference at home and around the world. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, no, you're not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health issues in the United States, and more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. Listen to your teammates and others about what they are going through. Think about the words you choose, avoid labels, and use stigma-free language when communicating. Build and use support systems with friends and family. Asking for help can be difficult, but seeking help to improve your health, academic, or athletic performance or another goal is a sign of strength. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. There are resources on your campus and in your community for help. The American, building healthy, powerful minds. Six different women have already scored for Temple after the first quarter in the books. In fact, uh, top two scores finished that period on the bench. Atkinson Davis with four points apiece. No surprise uh, when you have the only woman who averages a double double in Mia Davis, you're often going to control the points and the opportunities in the paint. Yeah, they definitely went inside and pounded the paint. They had a variety of people go in there off the dribble with the pass, you know, taking it to the front of the rim. Here you got a nice little turnaround jumper and and they, they just uh, they were patient. They they were well coached. They you know, they just had a good rhythm about them. It's a 12 to 2 advantage after that first quarter in the paint for Temple. Let me ask you this coach. How do you feel about seven assists on eight field goals for the house? Well, I, I feel it's deserving because uh, they're playing like like they're connected and uh, with some type of sense of urgency here on the road. I don't feel Tulane has come out ready in traffic count the bucket free throw coming up for Williamson. Well, Williamson uh, went in there and got to the big girl Heidi's body and she got to her body and, and really drew that foul. And that's the physical aggressiveness of Temple. It's an East Coast mentality. They're going to hang the foul on Clark. Otherwise, it would have been Heidi's second whistle already. Well, I should have officiated that. <laughs> so it was Clark, huh? Down low. Man to man, which is uh, kind of their some symbolic defense here. Baseline opportunity quickly shut down. Not a lot of dribble penetration by Tulane. And able to draw the contact, bailing out Arsula Clark there. She'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. Arsula last year was playing for those Warhawks of Louisiana Monroe. Did not have to sit out a year for, despite transferring over to Tulane. So they were pleased to get her a year early. All she did against Wichita State earlier this year was go off her 31 points. She's been averaging 12 points in her first year here in New Orleans. Well, she sit down game winners. Um, she's been aggressive. She she can. Uh, you know, shoot a great field goal percentage. Nice little addition to the team. That was on Amani Mayo, of course, Amani's twin, Nick Mayo. They are both juniors. Nick a walk on. Once again, this team is uh, Tulane is 10 points less coming in. They're averaging 59, where Temple's averaging 69. So they have to do something to make it more difficult for them to score than that. That's too easy. I mean, technically somebody was defending Mia Davis, but she's still able to go straight to the room. Well, there's no help. I mean, if you got a, a first team all conference player and one of the top players in the country, you got to give some help early and often. Open look, able to bank it in. She's just a freshman, but let's go ahead and give Peru a PhD in geometry. Well, Peru, uh, she, she deserves that, and uh, I think she did call it that time. The freshman out of Romania. 
And offense rebound, or pardon me, a defensive board for Aaron Gutierrez. This will stay with Tulane. Gutierrez is the slasher, kind of the playmaker, and she always has a lot of enthusiasm. There's that banker by Peru. But when she comes in the game, she, she does lift them up, and I do think they're kind of flat, so it's a good move by Coach. That one won't go for Peru, but long rebound. They reset here thing with Selma Bates. That's two of ten from three-point range. Now defenders staying glued to the ball hander Bates there a moment ago. Shot clock down to three. Now the left hand in time, and that's a good-looking shot from Bates, the freshman. Well, they called her a steady point guard, but that looks like a little bit more than steady. That's uh, a nice little three-point follow-through. That's just her fifth triple on the year. And it will come off the bench and give them some range, and now a chance for a three-point play of that other variety. I'd send a little memo to coach that I probably want to double down on her. You cannot hold her one-on-one. -on -one. You've got to bring in a couple people. Here, that's just way too easy. Davis at the line looking for her ninth point already. In 12 minutes, Peru will take a seat. Peru's your leading scorer with six points for Tulane today. And Mia Davis can do it all. Well, four of eights, pretty good so far, 50%. 12 minutes to play. Mia Davis is your number one rebounder in the league. Third leading scorer, mentioned she's averaging a double-double, has 17 double-doubles on the year. Already a point shy of 10 points. Just a couple of rebounds. Matched up with Freeman, another one of the top players in the league. Will kick it out. And Bates again. She had just four three-pointers all season long. She's already made half of that here tonight. Well, that's great because they need it. Um, they're getting beat in the paint 18 points to two. So it's, it's, it's been too easy for Temple to get it kind of in that mid-range and then deliver. That's a good defensive stop there by Tulsa, I mean T Tulane. Yeah, that's going to be an offensive foul called on Aaron Gutierrez, who probably wishes she had just gotten off a little easier with a walk call. Well, I'll take that offensive call all day because I'd rather get these guys aggressive and going to the hole than being passive and just shooting it on the perimeter. So. And this is an Al's team that is Second behind UConn and most points per game. And Tulane's been able to pick up the pace here in this second quarter, and Owls will come away empty handed there. Well, they're cutting the margin a little bit now. Temple, last couple times down, has gotten a little sloppy, hasn't really been focused, got a little bit of lead, started, you know, being a little more casual than they need to be. Still an 18 to 2 edge for Temple, points in the paint. With that said, Tulane's found some success with Bates along the perimeter recently. Turnover, now a foot race the other one. Up ahead, Niang will send it back. Great vision by Niang. She'll pick up an assist for her efforts now. Nine assists for Tulane on their 13 made field goals. Well, she's gotten better progressively, Niang, and, and that was a great touch pass by her. Williamson able to benefit, now has seven. And the rebound for Williamson. Uh, quickly, the Owls cough it up. Transition opportunity the other way with Clark. As Williamson forced her to throw, on, slam on the brakes. Kick out, Niang. One for four here early on from the perimeter. It's where all of her shots have come so far. Neither team's really crashing the glass. I, I don't feel either one's transitioning that much, so I think that I would send, you know, three and a half to the boards every time. Um, it's pretty easy picking in there. Hometown crowd gives Heidi and company the countdown. They'll never get the shot off. And 
I think she'd like to have that one back. She did everything but score it. A good transition back. Freeman with the left hand. Right here, squaring up and a little left hand touch pass, but she did, did a little hacky on the face. Tried to go for the block and missed it and then went for the face. Have a timeout, 28-20. Temple hanging on to an eight point edge here in New Orleans with 4.46 to go in the opening half on this final night in the American. Discovery. It can come from any direction, in places new and familiar, but often starts from within. No matter where Tulaneans go or what we're doing, we're making an impact. Over 160,000 Tulaneans making a difference at home and around the world. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, no, you're not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health issues in the United States, and more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. Listen to your teammates and others about what they are going through. Think about the words you choose, avoid labels, and use stigma-free language when communicating. Build and use support systems with friends and family. Asking for help can be difficult, but seeking help to improve your health, academic, or athletic performance or another goal is a sign of strength. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. There are resources on your campus and in your community for help. The American, building healthy, powerful minds. Welcome back to our live coverage here on the American Digital Network. Tulane actually outscoring Temple here in this second quarter after a slow start. And a big part of that is their ability to knock down the three here in this quarter. Well, it was uh, the Bates in, in Peru show. And uh, basically, uh, you, you expect that out of Peru because she, she's 9 of 35 for 20 uh, for 37%. I mean, she's shooting 37% for the year. But Bates is 25%. Not that great of a three-point shooter, but she got set and let it, let it happen. And, and now she's uh, on a little bit of a roll herself. Again, several games around the conference got underway about an hour prior to us over there on the East Coast. So we'll start seeing some final scores as Mackins knocks that one down. She has five points, her first triple on two tries. Well, 2.6 threes a game by Mackins. You'd expect her to, to pull the trigger. Marissa Mackins, uh, Durham, North Carolina product, giving them about 13 points a game. And yeah, that was her 72nd triple now on the year. One of the more prolific three-point shooters in the league this season. As Crystal off the mark that time. Tulane going to a few sets, which I like that they do that because I always feel like Lisa Stockton has a better grip of her team when she can call the sets and control who's shooting the basketball. That just didn't work out in their favor, but it was a good set. And just a little short. Freeman able to get the block, but sends it out of play. Well, they just clear out and run a little ISO, isolation for her to drive, and then they stick one of their best rebounders, Mia Davis, on the weak side for their cleanup. And first time this year, these two teams have scouted one another. Only time they are on one another's schedule, unless somehow they collide in the conference tournament. Up the floor here with Gutierrez. Nobody picking up Wells, the senior. One of just two seniors celebrating senior day today. 
They had those ceremonies before opening tip with family members and Coach Stockton. And a flat-footed rejection from Shannon Atkinson. Look, seniors already had her own senior day back in Philly. Looking to soak up her final regular season and enjoy it. Well, she started seven games. She's not she's not what you consider a, a deep bench player. She's someone that comes in and contributes quite a bit. And she said, get it out of here. He's played in every game this year, but yeah, just seven starts on the season. Got the hands up for the block on one end. Mackins quickly to the corner over to Mia Davis. Not in a real big hurry. And, and they haven't been all night. They take the shots when they come to them. Back to a double digit lead for Temple, but it'll stay at 11 for now. Gutierrez to Clark. Over to the corner. Bates looking for her third, not that time. Tulane team that had a lot more speed this year on its roster. They were excited about what that would allow them to do defensively with how aggressive they played. But sometimes you can play a little too quickly. And she is a magnet for the basketball, Mia Davis. Well, she just has great hands. When, when it gets anywhere in her vicinity, um, she's going to get it. And that was a loose ball that anyone could have had, but she kind of vacuumed that thing up. And Mia's putting yeah. up Mia Davis numbers, 11 points, 5 rebounds in 17 minutes. And a board there for Jones. I like, it. Well, I like how Temple, though, gets someone to shoot the ball opposite her. She just get, she just pushes you under the rim and, and gets the rebound. That was, that's what makes her a great double doubler. Temple just one of their last seven. It was Davis who made that lone bucket from point blank, and they'll never get a shot off here with the offensive foul. Well, Clark, Clark did a good job in there. Uh, first personal on Davis. Making her second, first on the offensive end. I think Gutierrez has come in and, and given them um, some really good minutes. I think they've settled down a lot with her at the helm and, and they've got a lot better continuity here. We've already seen 11 different players for Tulane tonight. Baseline look, and Gutierrez makes them pay. Nobody picks her up. She knocks it down for her first two. Well, just offensive flow, find the open man, shoot the basket, it's easy. Just gotta score it. Approaching the final minute this first half. Quick release. Again, Mackins more often than not, that's her shot. A little hesitation may have cost them, and that ball stays in play for the turnover, and then is Goodyear is able to force the turnover? No, she'll pick up the film. Well, that was good. The good offense by Mackins. She just uh, kind of bulldozed uh, Gutierrez down. She hustles and gets it, and then just kind of attacks her, and she can't slide her feet quick enough. And she was hoping to route Mackins out of bounds. I've been bra bragging about. Temple, but last couple times down, they haven't gotten the quality shot. And again, just one of their last eight. That's a good look, but it won't bounce through. Heidi with the rebound. Foul on Temple. Fourth team foul on the Owls, so no free throws yet. Well, you like to see the big girl like Heidi go up and get that one because she's in traffic. She secures it. She, she needed that a little bit for her game. About 10 seconds separating the two clocks. And there is on Temple the fifth foul. Occurred right at the top of the free throw line. Yeah, th Freeman's uh, three of five and then Davis is uh, five of 11, so. I think Freeman needs a few more looks here. Crystal, a 65% free throw shooter. She's your go-to girl. So, you know, she's had several double doubles. I just, I'd like to see them look for her a little bit more. Went off for 30 points against SMU. In fact, two of her best showings have been 
against Houston and her and SMU in her career, picking on those next door neighbors over in Texas. And then a whistle on the loose ball will be costly because now we walk it over. And that's the fifth foul on Tulane. How about Freeman's 20 rebounds versus ECU? I mean, that's that's a that's a statement right there. And several of these players certainly have uh, some highlights they'll point to here in the 2019 2020 campaign. Shot clock is off the rest of this first half. That foul was Mia Heidi's second a moment ago. Williamson knocks down the free throw. She has seven points, second leading score for Temple, who's been outscored by one this quarter. Not a lot of fouls and not a lot of turnovers, which is kind of nice. Um, both these teams do tend to turn it over, so it's been pretty clean so far. Well, Temple has a couple of guards that they certainly trust, averaging better than four assists a game. In fact, uh, Alexander, their freshman, has the best assist to turnover ratio in all of the American. Right now, Temple looking for a stop defensively. You see the clock, shot clock off. And able to beat the buzzer, but nothing more. Well, Tulane certainly put up a fight in that second quarter as they are within nine as we've reached halftime. Senior day for the Green Wave, looking for a comeback, perhaps another great third quarter like a year ago. Discovery. It can come from any direction, in places new and familiar, but often starts from within. No matter where Tulaneans go or what we're doing, we're making an impact. Over 160,000 Tulaneans making a difference at home and around the world. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, no, you're not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health issues in the United States, and more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. Listen to your teammates and others about what they are going through. Think about the words you choose, avoid labels, and use stigma-free language when communicating. Build and use support systems with friends and family. Asking for help can be difficult, but seeking help to improve your health, academic, or athletic performance or another goal is a sign of strength. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. There are resources on your campus and in your community for help. The American. Building healthy, powerful minds. fight to the top is coming to a new home. Be sure to claim your spot at the new battleground for this year's American Athletic Conference Championship. March 12th to the 15th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Undeniable.
be undeniable. It's halftime in New Orleans as Mia Davis and Alexa Williams have combined for 20 points, 10 rebounds to lead the way as Temple up by 11 here at the break. Discovery. It can come from any direction, in places new and familiar, but often starts from within. No matter where Tulaneans go or what we're doing, we're making an impact. Over 160,000 Tulaneans making a difference at home and around the world. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, no, you're not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health issues in the United States, and more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. Listen to your teammates and others about what they are going through. Think about the words you choose, avoid labels, and use stigma-free language when communicating. Build and use support systems with friends and family. Asking for help can be difficult, but seeking help to improve your health, academic, or athletic performance or another goal is a sign of strength. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. There are resources on your campus and in your community for help. The American, building healthy, powerful minds. fight to the top is coming to a new home. Be sure to claim your spot at the new battleground for this year's American Athletic Conference Championship. March 12th to the 15th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Undeniable. Tell, tell, tell me how I look in the night of the regular season in the American again some games starting to go final we are at halftime here in New Orleans Temple jumped down to an 18 to 7 start after the first quarter both teams pouring in 17 points in that second quarter that keeps us right at the 11 point margin here at the break Lincoln Rose Angela Beck let's take a look back at some of the bigger moments from those first two quarters of play well Tulane did a good job of getting some outside game going, which opened them up a little bit, and they really started getting a better flow. 
Then they start hitting their mid-range game and, and, and sharing the ball a little bit. I think Freeman's doing a pretty good job. I'd like to see Heidi get, get in there and get a few more because on the other side of the house, you've got double trouble, which is Williamson and Davis. And those two guys have been causing pretty much a nightmare for them because they're pounding it in the paint and, and they're scoring and making it. Yeah, again, we point out Tulane played even with Temple in that second quarter. The question is, did they dig themselves too deep of a hole in the first? Again, a year ago in Philadelphia on the road, Tulane went on a 15-0 run in the third quarter, never looked back for their second straight win against Temple. Take a look at some of the numbers that stand out, specifically that one there at the bottom, uh, the easy points going the way of the Owls. Yeah, I, I think it's something they have to correct quickly. Uh, but don't count out Tulane because Tulane has one of the best defenses in the country. Uh, they have made it difficult for Temple from the three-point range. So they just need to turn it up. Uh, you got five levels. I think they're at level three. They're kind of coasting a bit. They need to turn it up, get in fourth gear, fifth gear, and make this game. Crystal Freeman is your leading scorer for Tulane with her eight points, three rebounds. Meanwhile, both Bates and Peru off the bench, connecting on multiple three-pointers, six points apiece to help lead the way as well. It's Mia Davis, your game high of 11. We step aside. When we come back, we'll be underway third quarter in New Orleans. The fight to the top is coming to a new home. Be sure to claim your spot at the new battleground for this year's American Athletic Conference Championship. March 12th to the 15th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Undeniable. Discovery. It can come from any direction, in places new and familiar, but often starts from within. No matter where Tulaneans go or what we're doing, we're making an impact. Over 160,000 Tulaneans making a difference at home and around the world. Both teams making their way out, getting ready for the start of the second half. The Owls up 35-24 again. Just because the seventh season of American women's basketball is coming to a conclusion here on the American Digital Network doesn't mean that the good times don't continue as all of a sudden spring sports, softball, lacrosse, baseball, all coming up here on ADN. Our first softball game will be on the diamond out in Orlando. We'll stick around in Florida for some softball in Tampa as well. 
It is the second year for the American to host lacrosse. This year the championship will be in Gainesville as uh, Florida is a member and your defending champions will see ECU at Cincinnati on April 4th. And our first baseball contest will be over in North Carolina as the Cougars will take on the Pirates. All of that at the end of this month and next month as we transition into spring sports. But we're not ready to say goodbye just yet to this basketball season. A few final scores. UConn does finish 16 and 0 in conference play. They knock off USF in stores tonight. So that means UConn will be your number one seed. We knew that much. USF is going to be the four seed. The other top three seeds all finished on victorious notes. Cincinnati beat ECU tonight at home while UCF also at home is about a minute and a half away from beating Wichita State. So no surprises there among the top four. We knew the top four seeds were locked in. Didn't necessarily know the order, although UConn will be the one. Cincinnati two, followed by UCF and USF. Uh, again, a lot of coaches, not a big difference between being the two and three seed. The bigger difference is if everybody behaves, it's a matter of you'd rather be the three seed than the four seed. If you're going to play UConn, you want to do it on the nationally televised game for the championship uh, rather than the semifinals. So I just wonder, does UConn take the Nets down after they win a conference title when they win it just every year after year after year? Or do they wait? I, I mean, I'm serious about this. I want, I'm wondering. You know, different programs have a different policy. It, it's kind of like the rushing the court philosophy of certain, right. certain programs. Just You're never going to rush the court because every game yeah. uh, exactly. you are expecting it. I don't know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blazer a bet that they don't probably get up there on the ladder no. for a conference championship that they go undefeated in. They'll wait till they go over to the conference tournament down the road and cut those yeah. nets down if they can avoid an upset. And of course, looking to lock up both titles to get as high of a seat as possible in the conference tournament. Third quarter underway. Mia Heidi with the rebound, foul on Temple. Again, Tulane played much better there in that second quarter. They do need a run to help erase an 11 point deficit that was built back in the first frame. Well, Mia Heidi uh, needs to come alive a little bit. She has to do a little bit more for him for the amount of minutes that she's playing. Uh, they've just got to find another answer. Uh, you know, they've got Williamson on one side with uh, Davis, and they're a one-two punch, and it hurts you in the gut when you watch them play because they're, they're going to take you down. But they just they need a little bit more aggressiveness from the other players on the two-lane team to, to get this thing back in check. Right now, all the home teams have either won or have a lead with the exception of our game here in New Orleans. SMU midway through. While Griggs has knocked down three threes tonight for Memphis, Reagan Bradley has already knocked down four of five for Travis Mays' women. And Houston trailing by two in Tulsa to Matilda Mossman's Golden Hurricane. I think ECU, the second half of the season, has been your surprise team. A nice finish again to Lane back within single digits. See if they can take care of most of the heavy lifting here in this third quarter and not leave it till the end of the game. Well that was about as definitive as I've seen and Bates has been one of the more definitive players in the game. She really put it put her head down and decided she was she was going to attack the glass and that was great. Back to mail. Quick touch, four of the five owls. Now all five have touched it this trip down. Offensive putback won't go for Mayo. And back over to the Green Wave. I think, they're, I think the Green Wave have rimmed out maybe six to eight that I can count. This is their last trip down. That was a nice touch and that was the definitive drive that we talked about, but I'm talking about Temple. Temple's had some really, really good looks, and they're just rimming them out. So they just need to take one more, more second and uh, get a little more focus because those are quality shots. It's the third whistle on the egg. She becomes the first owl to pick up three fouls. Becomes the first player on either team with the third whistle. Cheatham still looking for her first points. Uh, We'll look on as Arsula Clark, two for two. Both of her points have come from the charity stripe tonight. Yeah, Temple doesn't look to go too deep on their bench, so it's not good for them to have a lot of players in foul trouble. 
Uh, they stay with their standard players. They've got like five players, six players that have played the double digit minutes, six players. So she's pretty selective. Let's see if they go down so inside now to Davis. They, they've kind of messed around here a little bit. They need to get, get her the ball inside. She's up top right now. See if she's able to matriculate her way a little closer to the rim. A quick release from Jones off the mark. Offensive rebound won't go for Williamson. Williamson had her really deep in the paint, and then she took a backup dribble and, and the fade shot, and it just didn't make sense. She started about three quarters of the season. She's already exceeded her averages in scoring and rebounding there in that first half alone. Freeman looks comfortable here on her home court, knocking that one down. Timeout, Temple. It's just a two-score ball game all of a sudden as Crystal Freeman in the green wave have put the Owls on notice. Tulane trying to send their seniors out in style. The fight to the top is coming to a new home. Be sure to claim your spot at the new battleground for this year's American Athletic Conference Championship. March 12th to the 15th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Undeniable. Tulane faced an 11 point deficit at halftime. They've already trimmed this game within two scores. That has prompted a timeout from Tony Cardoza and Temple. Well, a couple of great coaches I haven't dived into this just yet, but of course, Lisa Stockton, 26 seasons, 500 plus victories at Tulane. Tony Cardoza already the winningest head coach in Temple's history. Now in year number 12. Both teams will be taking their squads back to the conference tournament. Tulane's already improved on last year when they went 5 and 11 in conference to finish ninth. They would have a first round exit against Coach Fernandez's Bulls. Temple last year went 7 and 9. A win today would help them improve upon that, finishing 500 in this challenging conference. And Davis may have taken a little bump. Transition opportunity for Tulane, but. Temple gets back quickly defensively. They don't necessarily guard the shooter along the perimeter. And there's Sierra Cheatham. Finally, her first point. She's only played nine minutes tonight. We were talking about where is she and what's going on here. And then uh, Coach must have heard us on the headsets. Yeah, our, put, her, put her in, and there you go. So. Spin some wires crossed. Our apologies. Yeah. But that, that's a good look. I mean, they give her plenty of time. She could have taken a seat and then come back in and taken that shot. Cheatham out of Houston, Texas, the junior. Yeah, I don't see the uh, intensity on Temple anymore right now. They're just, they're pretty flat. They've missed some great looking shots and they're just not playing any great defense. So 
They're not known for their defense anyway, but they could pick it up a little. Trying to stretch it back to a two score lead. That one out of bounds. Team rebound for Tulane, and they could potentially tie it with another Cheatham three right here. It was a 9 0 start in that first quarter for Temple. They have not trailed. Freeman's confidence is building. That one poked out of bounds by Williamson. will stay with the wet green wave. I like it when uh, Tulane goes and gets set and gets the ball inside and then does the outside action because it, it, there's a better flow for them. Well, for Tulane last year, they didn't really have that extra score on the team. The addition of Arsula Clark has certainly allowed them to have a little extra punch offensively. And again, as good of a rebounder as Mia Davis is, that ball just seems to know that it belongs in her arms. She's had a few easy ones come her way. As that gives her six now for the ball game. I think Tulane's willing to let Mia Davis shoot from the outside. If I'm Temple, I'd keep her around the basket for that reason right there, the rebounds. Cheatham able to close and get a hand in the face, perhaps just in time to alter the shot. And contact away from the basketball. Yeah, that's, that's a, another one on Davis. It's her second foul. First foul. You'll see she's battling Freeman. That's her third. What a difference that would make in this game if she had to take a seat for a while. That would make a big difference. A little pep in the step right now for Tulane. They're running their sets much better. Look at that, straight up the middle. That is plan A every time. Freeman has Tulane back within one. She has a dozen now. That well, was great execution. A little box set, pull them out, open it up, little cross, and, and then dive your best player right down the middle. One of these teams will finish fifth in the standings. Have a timeout. Freeman, 12 points, has pulled her green wave within one. Discovery. It can come from any direction, in places new and familiar, but often starts from within. No matter where Tulaneans go or what we're doing, we're making an impact. Over 160,000 Tulaneans making a difference at home and around the world. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, no, you're not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health issues in the United States, and more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. Listen to your teammates and others about what they are going through. Think about the words you choose, avoid labels, and use stigma-free language when communicating. Build and use support systems with friends and family. Asking for help can be difficult, but seeking help to improve your health, academic, or athletic performance or another goal is a sign of strength. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. There are resources on your campus and in your community for help. The American. Building healthy, powerful minds.
Midway third quarter, Lincoln Rose and Angela Beck and coach. Let's see if you can pick up what I'm putting down here. At halftime, it was 35-24 Temple. It's now 35-34 to Lane back within one. Well, that would mean that one team didn't score, right? A Temple has not scored here midway through the third quarter. That lead that was 11 at halftime, perhaps about to evaporate. And what happened last year? Third quarter. Yeah, 15 0 run for the Green Wave. So maybe we're getting a little more of that, you know, coming out strong in the third quarter and getting focused. Temple needs to, to you know, shift the tides here a little bit, pick up the tempo, be a more aggressive inside and focused, play a little defense. Both Niang and Davis for Temple have three fouls. Nobody for Tulane with more than two. Freeman is your game high scorer now with 12 points to go with her five rebounds. Looking for Heidi, able to resecure that ball. Still 11 to shoot. And an offensive rebound for Clark. And a fresh shot clock to go with it. Total rebounds equal right now per team, so both teams being pretty aggressive on the boards. Cheatham to Heidi from 15 out, gets a little closer. Nice job defensively by Atkinson just to hold her ground. That's the best I've seen her go to the hole tonight. I just wish she would have jumped, stop, pump, fake, get her in the air, and you know, use that strong body of hers. So Tulane was not able to take its first lead on that last trip. Can Temple into drought here. Still looking for their first points of the third quarter, and there they are. Well, if you're gonna get a, your first point on a layup, that's that's a pretty good one to do. I mean, high quality, they needed it. Mackins with her sixth and seventh points of the night. And Tulane still within one score. This to tie it off the side of the iron from Cheatham, one and done. Now we've got a whistle away from the ball. Ooh, Davis. Off the ball, Davis. It is the fourth foul on Mia Davis. Heidi did a good job of blocking her out. She tried to come over the back a little bit. Wow. That's gonna hurt. And Heidi's going to come out to get a breather in favor of Peru. So Davis takes a seat with her 11 points, six rebounds. Another wide open look for Tulane though on the out of bounds. The Temple not doing a good job defending that. Tulane's missed their last four shots. A two minute drought, unable to take that lead. Let's see how the Owls stay composed in the absence of their leader. With that said, they have a couple of very well poised guards and others who can get those offensive rebounds like Atkinson there. But the shot won't go. She outquicked herself on that. Both teams shooting 32% tonight. Five three-pointers for Tulane, three of them for Temple here on the road. Green Wave now just one of their last seven, 0 for their last five shooting, almost a three-minute drought. After a 10-0 run to start this third quarter. Clark eyes up the floor. Bates back to Clark. Little two-woman game as Tulane back within one. Well, that was a great hesitation pass. Bates jump stop, hesitated, dumped it down. Wide open shot. Good execution. Neither of them were on this team a year ago. A nice chemistry developed throughout the course of this season. Tulane, still not in the driver's seat, at least not yet. Temple's lead survives at one with a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. And they'll get tangled up. And the foul will be on Atkinson. Well, good job of blocking out for Tulane. Last score here. Good dump down and finish by Jones. 
Jones this time not doing the assist, but getting the assist. That foul on Atkinson is her third. She becomes the third Al with three or more. Another opportunity for the Green Wave to secure its first lead. They've outscored Temple 12 to two here in the third and a foul that time on Williamson. Just her first. Clark's starting to uh, really push her presence. I mean, that's a good drive. She gets the contact. She's trying to make it happen. Good finish on the last play. Thousand points in her career already. In Wichita State with a loss, finishes seven and nine. One of these two teams will finish seven nine as well, but I believe they'll have the tiebreaker ahead of the Shockers. SMU right now is on track to also improve to seven and nine. They still have a quarter to go. Little full court press now by Tulane. They, they do like to do that. They like to mix it up. There's almost a steal. A collision while fighting for that basketball. Yeah, it looks like uh, might have got taken a little bit in the face there. Not a good pass, that little lob pass. Yeah, she, she just went right into her body. Meanwhile, Matilda Mossman is getting 14 points off the bench tonight from Destiny Johnson as Tulsa, a slight edge still that they're maintaining against Houston. Never know what is going to happen on any given night. But home teams defending their court, and that may include Tulane here. Temple's going to stretch the lead, a short-lived deficit. That's that's Jones squaring up for the shot on, on that. But once again, it's an eight-foot shot, quality shot. Straight away. Tulane back up, this time by two. Freeman. Why not Freeman? She's, she's asserting herself, six of 10, one of two from three point, 15 points on the night. She's telling Davis, hey, I'm right here. They've got the fans back in it. And how about that for another great third quarter for the Green Wave. They outscore the Owls 17 to four, and they have a lead here on Senior Day. Heading into the final quarter of American play. Discovery. It can come from any direction, in places new and familiar, but often starts from within. No matter where Tulaneans go or what we're doing, we're making an impact. Over 160,000 Tulaneans making a difference at home and around the world. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, no, you're not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health issues in the United States, and more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. Listen to your teammates and others about what they are going through. Think about the words you choose, avoid labels, and use stigma-free language when communicating. Build and use support systems with friends and family. Asking for help can be difficult, 
but seeking help to improve your health, academic, or athletic performance or another goal is a sign of strength. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. There are resources on your campus and in your community for help. The American, building healthy, powerful minds. Take a look at the Temple Huddle. I want to brag on our huddle that we've had over the years here on the American Digital Network for American women's basketball, specifically on the broadcast side, of course. Uh, so fortunate to work with Coach Angela Beck, but uh, we've got Paula Harper, Dustin Gunch, who have uh, been the heart of the truck for most of the, these seasons, along with Martin Winterstrom, Scott Railing. Uh, big thanks to Patrick, who's in our ears throughout this broadcast, and uh, Ignacio. Uh, often uh, behind the camera. Also, of course, we'd be remiss not to mention Barbara Jacobs going out uh, in style, retiring this year has been uh, so critical to, again, the growth of coverage for women's basketball, even before the formation of the American, certainly. Uh, this is her final year with the American Conference, and our thanks to Megan Herbs as well, who has helped us coordinate with the busy schedules of coaches over the years to, to make sure we always have a chance to chat and kind of learn as much as we can uh, from week to week. Yeah, it's been a great relationship, and yeah, thank you, Lincoln. You're a consummate professional, and always fun to call. And yeah, I actually have a few good jokes. A um, few, I've said a few. Yeah, it's not, it, it would not make for a good free throw percentage. <laughs> Correct. Thank you. As Tulane right now up by a pair after the Freeman triple, we are underway here in the fourth. On this final night so far, every home team that has gone final has won. Tulane trying to join them and improve to eight and eight. They'll say that ball did not hit off the iron, but it's a moot point rebound for Temple. Big story right now, Mia Davis on the bench with four fouls. A couple of her teammates with three fouls as well. That's not gonna slow down Jones, her second bucket. Yeah, I think Jones is going to be the go to with along with uh, Williamson. So look for those two guys to absorb some of this uh, scoring deficit since da Davis is on the bench. For Tulane, as Crystal Freeman has gone, so has the squad. She now has 15 points, seven rebounds. Crystal Freeman, but Clark, boy, she sure has, uh, she has a lot of tenacity. She's got a very quick first step. She's dangerous when she gets the ball off the drive and, and she makes a lot of things happen. Well, she's already been to the free throw line three times tonight. Five of six from the charity stripe. For five of her seven points, she forces, again, the hand and creates her own opportunities. Six of seven. Pretty good. She, she wasn't shooting that good of that 58% coming into the game and six of seven is pretty nice. Well, Tulane never trailed by 17, but they three times this year had a comeback of at least 17 on the road in games. So if you're Lisa Stockton, you know you have a fight within this team. You would just like them to avoid digging too deep of a hole early on. Well, I think Tulane in this full court press, uh, it definitely has caused Temple some issues. I would, and uh, they're right down here by Tulane's bench. So, you know, they're helping them out, the officials out with the calls too. Freeman looking for another, not that time, but a foul is going to keep it on this end. Well, I'll tell you what, the block out by Tulane is pretty tremendous. Uh, and they've now gotten two fouls by Temple for, from just the block out. Establishing their position and, and then they're crawling over their back. Atkinson picks up her fourth. This will be their shirt, third shot at goal with, in this possession. Gives you a little more confidence taking that shot. A New Zealand native. And they only put three defenders on Freeman that time in addition to the baseline. And somehow this ball stays with Tulane. Six seconds left on the clock, so has to be a pretty, pretty quick decision here. They were able to get Freeman right under the bucket on their last baseline inbounds play. This time they go to Clark off the mark.
And just like that, Temple's already scored more here in the early going of the fourth quarter than they did all of the third, as Mackins does what Mackins does. Yep, she gets them every game, 2.6, so she's bound and determined to get a few. And points for Mackins, second leading scorer for Temple behind Davis, who's still on the bench. And at what point do you feel like you have to bring Mia Davis back in with, and to play smart with four fouls? Uh, I'd probably wait another couple minutes, six minutes to go. A foul moment ago, Niang picked up her fourth, so three Temple Owls, if they are going to hang on to a win here, have to be smart with fouls down the stretch. Well, with it only being a two point, a one point game, you know, you're okay having them on the bench. Obviously, you'd like to get a bigger lead, but if, if this thing breaks away a little bit and Temple gets a little bit of a lead, you, you'll see her coming in quite quickly. Just a 4-3 they knocked down a moment ago to reclaim this advantage up by one. Well, just like we've had the same team around as both of these coaches have to be thrilled that they've been able to keep their coaching staffs together. Of course, for Lisa Stockton, 14th year that her top assistant, Alan Fry. We've got Dosha Woods in her 10th year, Beth Duncanberger in 8th year. And you know, as a coach, recruiting players is hard enough, but to have to also recruit more coaches year in and year out. Tanya Cardoza, 11 years with Wavini. Of course, Willnick Crockett, the former UConn Husky, has been around, as has now C.J. Jones for the past few years. But let's take a look at the standings as they were coming into today. Now we can confirm UConn has improved to 16 and 0. Cincinnati and UCF have both improved now to 11 and 5. USF, by nature of playing UConn in stores, they are now 10 and 6, but they are still going to claim one of those coveted top four seeds with the first round off. This is where the question mark lingers. Wichita State has fallen. They are 7 and 9. Temple, Tulane, one of them will be eight and eight. SMU right now is getting close to improving to seven and nine with a chance to possibly climb ahead of whoever falls. And then uh, still a bit of a mess down there in the bottom of the standings. So whoever wins the game basically is gonna be fifth. Yeah. And that means they're gonna be in UConn's bracket and they're gonna play probably USF in the first round. No, they're gonna play the 12th, he's the 12th. You really know how to uh, rain on a parade. Well, I mean, I mean, let's get down to it. It's going to be, yeah, that's going to be, it, it, it's true. But, I mean, this isn't going to be any easier, the other bracket. So, um, you're not going to have to play UConn until so first, semis. So, first the five seed will play the 12 seed, barring an upset there. Then you get to dance with USF. Yep. You are able to knock off an angry USF team after they just went to stores tonight. Uh, then you would potentially play UConn in the semifinals. Uh, but that 12 seed right now is presumably uh, Memphis or Tulsa. Tulsa with a slight edge at home at the moment last we checked. I mean, you can throw all the seeds away once you get to the tournament, right? Anyway, in those first two rounds, anyone can beat anyone, um, except for the second round maybe with UConn. But I mean, generally speaking, the the tournament special and it's your third season and you forget about everything and you start over. Yeah, wipe the slate clean. It's all about who can survive playing that many games. Freeman just off the mark and a one handed rebound. Why one handed? Because Atkinson had the other arm tied behind her back. Are they going to call a foul on her? That's on her. That would be her fifth. No, that is going to be on Tulane. I'm going to tell you. Tulane has run some great sets out of bounds and Temple has done a poor job of defending them because all they have to do is hit the shot, but they've had wide open shots every time. Temple with the one point edge and they'll never get a shot this trip down. Just sloppy here. Mackins called for the foul. Eight minutes to go. You can't afford to just turn the ball over. Well, this one's still anybody's game inside eight minutes here in the fourth quarter. An 11 point lead at halftime for Temple completely has evaporated. They reestablish a one point edge at the moment, a chance to grow it here to two scores. How about the redirection? Everything but the bucket for Jones. Well, wow, that was uh, crafty. I mean, she's someone who will never need a GPS device, able to reroute herself. Well, it's become the Clark 
Clark Schill on that side and, uh, you know, Crystal Freeman, obviously. But Clark, I mean, that's a great shot for her. She just missed it, but she's making things happen. Yeah, Davis still has not come in yet here in the fourth quarter after heading out midway in the third with her fourth foul. And got to avoid the travel there. They say Peru got rid of it in time. Plenty of time to find a quality look. Freeman with a hand in her face. As Atkinson with the rebound. Her fourth. Atkinson is matched up with Freeman, playing with four fouls, is Atkinson. Off her own foot and we'll get a little help here. Foul called on Clark, her third. Well, Tulane has a two, uh, two minute and 39 minute scoring drought here. Mia Davis is back in the game. First time since picking up that fourth whistle and they go right to Mia. Neither team has scored in the last couple minutes, so. Uh, two minute drought for Temple, almost a three minute drought for Tulane. Let's see if they go inside to arrested Davis. Headed to the free throw line is Jones, her first trip to the charity stripe today. Temple's only been to the line twice, despite all their success in the paint. They're four for four. Temple's a great free throw shooting team though. One of the best in the league at number two, shooting 78% from the free throw line. And so um, expect them to sink these down the stretch. So Jones, who's been two of 12 from the floor, hits a couple of big free throws down the stretch. It's hard to believe that when you look at how she's played, you keep thinking she's done some outstanding things, which she has. She has five rebounds and five assists, so she has had an outstanding night as far as that goes, but she just hasn't shot the ball well. We haven't seen that rim be too kind to either team here this evening. Three minute scoring drought for the Green Wave. And yet they're just down by three. Little jump stop, pop, gets it to drop. Count the bucket for Clark. She's got 11. Looking to make it a dozen at the line. Clark here, she gets inside the paint, kind of fades away from it, gets a soft rim, puts it down. A free throw to tie potentially here. Again, she's already seven of eight from the line. And that's even better than her usual numbers. She's about a 65% free throw shooter. Well, we needed someone else on Tulane's side to step up, but Clark has answered that. Bates, too, at eight points, so um, they've given a much needed help to Freeman. Temple's lead still at one. Looking for the high low here. Mia yeah, Heidi matched up again with Mia Davis. Heidi with the block got the better of the exchange that time. Averages about two rejections a night. That's the second time that Davis has taken it on the ground at Heidi, and Heidi has rejected her. Second, in, Heidi's second in uh, the American in blocks at 1.9 per game. I'd love a stat to be kept of how many of your blocks stay playable for your team, because that was big, that not just the rejection from Heidi, but Tulane the possession. They'll wave off the basket, foul was first. Ball will stay with Tulane. Well, Tulane's identity here at, in the last uh, third and fourth quarter has really rised. Uh, they, you can tell who they want to go to, when they want to go. Here, here you got Davis driving, and, and Heidi just takes it away. I mean, she, she, she gets all ball. She does come down a little bit on her ver verticality, but um, she gets all ball, so great, great block by the big girl. Heidi, sophomore, the pride of Austin, Texas.
64% right now for Tulane at the free throw strike, 9 of 14. 100% at the line right now for Temple. Heidi does pick up the foul. That's her fourth. She becomes the first Tulane player with four whistles. Only Clark has three or more otherwise. Temple's outscored Tulane this quarter, seven to four. Only put up four points in that third quarter, which got them into a little bit of trouble here on the road. Right now, one point edge for the Owls. It's pretty much like you said, the last game they played, 17 points for Tulane in that third quarter versus four. Yeah, that was their last meeting a year ago in Philadelphia. Tulane has a two game winning streak against Temple who won the first six ever meetings between these two teams. First meeting was back in 2008. Only on the schedule once this year in the regular season. Clark gets iron, nothing more. Right to Mackins into the paint. And Peru did enough again. Peru's come back on in place of Heidi. Yeah, a little floater, but you, know, you really want him to shoot that shot. You don't want him to float that shot against the big girl. How about that marquee matchup? And Freeman takes this round. That's an isolation for Freeman. They've run it the last couple times down. Uh, and there's no help there, so someone has to help because she can back you down and she can also take that fade shot. Well, and she knows how many fouls Davis is playing on right now. How will this shake out? I thought Williamson had her positioning, but it doesn't look like that's what the call is. It looks like it's on her. Here she sets the pick. I mean, it looks fairly clean to me. I mean, she 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 uh, had position, but you know, officials can't be perfect. Well, you saw it that way. Just to uh, get some angry social media sent my way, I could see how you get an offensive foul there on Davis, going right into the defender, regardless of what the screen looks like on the other side. But she does not pick up her fifth. Well, she's first team all conference. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, it's hard to give her her fifth. Ooh, what was that? Ooh. Getting tangled up. It's getting a little heated exchange here. I think a little unofficial warning was just given. Davis is back on the bench, and this may be a frequent substitution pattern where she can come in offensively, come out defensively. Her Al's up by one. I don't know if I like that. I mean, I, I'm obviously not the coach of that team, but it's it's hard to come in and out like that. And she's also a great rebounder for him. So we'll see how that works. They need help right here. Turn around, Freeman. She has taken over here late. Back up by one. She's getting deep in the paint. And, uh, you know, there's no help. So you have to get a quick double on that. Crystal Freeman has 19 points to go with her eight rebounds, trying to send her senior teammates out in style on senior day and head into the conference tournament on a high right now up by one. The fight to the top is coming to a new home. Be sure to claim your spot at the new battleground for this year's American Athletic Conference Championship. March 12th to the 15th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Of six. 49-48 our score right now. It's Tulane at home. They've erased an 11-point halftime deficit. We're here in the fourth quarter. Temple has gone cold over their last five from the floor. No field goals knocked down in excess of five minutes now this drought. Mia Davis is back on here on the offensive end. Playing with four fouls. Matched up with Mia Heidi. Also playing with four fouls. Shot clock winding down. Hand in the face and Temple's going to line. Yeah. Clark's fourth foul. 
not a bad possession. Just I'd like to see a little more ball reversal. Each player's kind of holding the ball, holding the ball, and they're not being able to reverse it quickly. I'd like to see them get into their high-low game a little more. They can't they can't hold down their high-low game with Williamson and, and Davis. Easily the tightest game of the night on this final evening in the American regular season. We've talked about their free throw shooting so far, eight of eight. Should we keep talking about it or? Depends for whom you're rooting. Well, I'm rooting for both, both teams, of course. You're rooting for fundamentals. Yes, I'm just rooting. I'm, you know how you always talk about a free throw and then somebody misses right. it? That's what I'm rooting not, not to do because I want both teams to shoot it well. We agreed on that in our secret meetings long time ago. Jones, four for four at the charity stripe, does not miss, no broadcaster jinx. Temple back up by one despite no field goals in six minutes. And they'll say out of bounds was the foot of Williamson when she secured that ball. So it stays with Tulane. Well, let's see if uh, Temple can put together a, a good defensive effort here. Freeman's been pretty much doing whatever she wants in the last few times down the court. So they have to find a way to give Atkinson some help inside. Freeman matched up with Atkinson. And Temple comes up with a stop, and that is Williamson, who is unable to get back up. Not sure what happened there. I think it's an ankle, but not really sure. And the question is, did they land on that left foot or not? Oh, she just, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's her own right foot, yeah. Yep, she twisted her ankle, kind of everted it. That's, is that a word, eversion? It is now. We'll step aside, consult a dictionary when we come back. 2.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. Temple up by one. Undeniable. Uh, you see Williamson heading back towards the training area where she'll get looked at here in crunch time. 2.20 to go. Temple a one point lead. Again, they don't have a field goal in the last six minutes now. And yet, they have the edge. Well, plenty of time on that shot clock. Jones may have rushed it, but Temple gets the offensive rebound from Atkinson. That's a great, great rebound. Tough take, two, two defenders down there, so maybe not what you're looking for there. Top two scores tonight for Temple, 13 for Davis, 10 for Mackins, both on the floor right now. And that ball winds up with Heidi. Turnover for the Owls. Meanwhile, Tulane only has two points off Al's turnovers all night. Well, Tulane's really become the aggressors. That time, Clark aggressively penetrating the interior, drawing two defenders and drawing the foul. Free throws the rest of the way. Nine of 14 for 43 as a team. Clark is back at the line. She's now eight of 10. Well, what's impressive is she's eight of 10, and what's more impressive is that she's had 10 attempts. Right. It shows what kind of game. Now eight of her 12 points have come from the line, and I'll update that to nine of her 13. Just tells how aggressive she's been and how much she wants it. I'd like to see them get it to Davis on the low post. I, I just don't think she's had enough touches there or get on a high low. Temple's missed his last six shots. Now 0 for their last seven. Almost a seven minute drought for Temple from the floor. 
it's mostly been guards creating and shooting over people. And yet Temple only trails by one. Both of these teams have lost some close games, so they're both. Yeah, during that 6-0 start for Tulane, we really saw the grit. They were winning some close ones, including a matchup against Wichita State we saw earlier in the year. Well, as many struggles as the Owls have had, now seven and a half minutes without a field goal, a bucket here would do wonders. Heidi again. She enjoys the moment. That ball winds up with Freeman. And a timeout for Tulane with a critical opportunity to go up by at least three. Well, I mean, Heidi's in a little bit of foul trouble, so you would think, you know, you would keep taking it at her, and they do, and she just doesn't give them any ground. She's taking it personally. She knew if she stayed vertical, kept those arms straight up, likely would not get the call. I'm surprised Davis hasn't been able to get effective off the dribble on her because if she gets enough room. Obviously, she has the speed to get around her, but she, she just she's blocked Davis twice on the sideline so far. Anyway, 36 seconds to go um, in regulation. Correct. Look for Clark to take it off the dribble or or they, they, them to go to Freeman. This has been a good one. 18 to 7 was the score after the first quarter. Temple up. They had an 11 point lead at halftime as well. But a 17 to 4 third frame for Tulane has put them in position to close out the regular season with a win at home. Certainly not guaranteed though. 19 points from Freeman tonight. I think she surprised herself. 21 points for Crystal Freeman, part of a double-double night to go with her 10 boards. That was good hesitation by Freeman. She just turned around, totally got the pivot, and, and the defender fell off, and she just shot the little jumper. Now Temple trails by three. At what point on the clock does a defense start debating whether you need to foul and just give them two free throws or whether you let them play it out? I mean, I think you, you got to go for the best shot you can quickly. Uh, if it's a two point shot to the rim or if it's a in, in, inside to a post or a three pointer, I, I'll, I, you know, I'm sure that they'll take a three if they have it. But uh, historically, 14 seconds is a lot of time down the stretch. If you want to go for a layup and then go back and forth trading free throws. I never really call it a lot of time in the women's game. 14 seconds to me isn't a lot of time, but I think um, it gives you enough time to make a quick foul, put the pressure on them to make the two free throws, and then come back and have your last opportunity. You mentioned Temple has had struggles, Mr. Last nine shots from the floor. What has helped keep them in this game is they're 10 for 10 and their limited opportunities from the free throw line. Yeah, I mean, their free throws with Clark shooting like she's shooting it. I mean, that tells the tale right there. And Clark's been your difference for Tulane down the stretch. All right, 14.6 seconds here in the fourth quarter. It'd be nifty if, you know, they have a quick little hit right here that they can just get a double screen, get a shooter coming off it. Mackins will pull the trigger on the pass. She's your top threat in excess of 70 triples knocked down this year. Okay, looking for a, a double screen for her, but that doesn't work. And they stay glued. Too much, too much time. And now it's going to be tough to get that good look off. Maybe just desperation to force us to overtime. It's not going to be a block shot, but Mia Heidi swats that one away. And now just 0.3 seconds left. Yeah, that's the ball game, folks. Now, you can get a shot off here. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to catch and shoot in the air. And Cardoza, I think they're consulting the monitor to see if the clock is right. I don't believe this is actually a timeout being called. Yeah, if it's 0.3 seconds. That is enough time to catch and release. Catch and release, not come down, not, I mean, get it and shoot it. So if you, you you can't do it at the rim, it's got to be a three-pointer here. So it's it's going to be tough, but 
Uh, he's got to catch and, catch and release. And Mackins is your ideal shooter for Temple. We saw Mia Davis trying some earlier in this contest. Davis came out really strong, but really in the second half, I think she's only had two points. I think she had 11 at half. So, I mean, just hasn't been a really good half for her. There's a look right Point there. Point six on the clock from the corner. Good if it had gone, it does not. Tulane wins one in a comeback on senior day. That was an excellent out of bounds play set up by Temple. That's one of their best shooters back and out of bounds. She just missed it, but what a good, good look for them. The Green Wave will finish at eight and eight. They are your five seed going into Connecticut for the conference tournament. Well, Temple seven and nine. And has lost three in a row against the Green Wave. What a fight for Tulane clawing their way back. Well, some clutch free. Yeah, fl clutch free throw shooting, but what a game by uh, Freeman. Yeah, Crystal Freeman, 21 points, 10 rebounds, the double double in her 38 minutes. Well, she, she did it all. Look at that control that she has on, on the post. She was extremely strong, physical. She has the touch of the shooter here at mid range. And, uh, you know, she attacked the glass whenever she could. Nice little touch here off the glass. So, uh, high quality shots, good looks, gutsy performance by her. Uh, down the stretch, hitting the game winner and cutting down the middle of the lane on an out of bounds play, too. So she just did it all for him all night. There is a lot left to be determined on this final night of the American women's schedule. All six home teams, it appears, will head into the conference tournament on a winning note, including Tulane, who snaps a seven game skid heading into the conference tournament. A big thanks to our entire American Digital Network crew and everybody that we've been able to work hand with hand with uh, up in the conference offices. For Angela Beck, I'm Lincoln Rose. What a night in the Big Easy. Tulane fights back to close out the regular season in style.